Good evening. Before we begin our school board meeting this evening, we have a wonderful young lady from J.B. Martin, Miss Riley Gregson, who is an eighth grade student there, who's going to lead us in the prayer before the pledge. Let me tell you a little bit about Miss Riley. She's on the cheer squad, the beta club, and has achieved honor roll every quarter at J.B. Martin. Woo woo! Way to go, Riley. Congratulations. <laughs> According to Principal Stephen Gutierrez, Riley is an all-around great student. We appreciate you joining, joining us tonight for the prayer. And following the prayer, Mr. Jay Robichaud will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, as we gather this evening, we ask you to help us to grow closer and support the bonds of our community. Give us grace as we engage in this meeting. Heavenly Father, protect our schools, families, students, faculty, and staff. Despite our current situation, I thank God for allowing students a proper education and extracurricular activities while still taking the precautions needed to shelter and protect our community. Help us to be wise in the decisions we make for our schools and to lead with integrity. Guide us to focus on our core business of teaching and learning. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We thank you so much, Ms. Riley, and we hope you have a wonderful last quarter of eighth grade. Thank you for joining us. I call to order the meeting of the St. Charles Parish Public School Board for, month, for Wednesday, March 24, 2021. Welcome one and all. Um, tonight for our roll call, we have seven of our eight board members present with Mr. Knockhant absent. We have Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Ortling, our superintendent, and Ms. Shelley Babineau, our board secretary, and we welcome one and all. <laughs> All right, now we'll move on to uh, the resolution and proclamations portion of our meeting. Uh, item 2.01, resolution in memory of Janet Bogé. And I would ask Mr. Ellis Alexander if he would please read that one for us. Madam President, it, it will be an honor and a privilege for me to read this resolution in memory of Ms. Janet Bogé. Whereas Ms. Janet Bogé serves as a school office specialist for 25 and a half years in the St. Charles Parish public school system, and be it resolved that the St. Charles Parish School Board herein expresses to the family of the late Ms. Janet Boche its sincere sympathy in this their time of sorrow, and be it further resolved that a page in the March 24th, 2021 board minute meeting minute book be set aside for the sole purpose of inscribing thereon this resolution and that a copy of this resolution be presented to Ms. Boucher's family. And I move that we adopt this resolution. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Alexander and a second by Mr. Oakland. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 2.01 passes unanimously.
item 2.02, .02, resolution in memory of Floyd Dell Dees Fricky. And I would ask Mr. Sonny Savoy if he would please read this resolution. Thank you, Madam President. It would be my pleasure. Whereas Ms. Floyd Dell Dees Fricky served as a teacher for 34 years with 25 years in the St. Charles Parish Public School System, and be it resolved that the St. Charles Parish School Board herein expressed to the family of the late Ms. Dell Fricky its sincere sympathy in this their time of sorrow and be it further resolved that a page in the March 24, 2021 minute book be set aside for the sole purpose of inscribing their own this resolution and that a copy of this resolution be presented to Ms. Fricky's family. Madam President, I move for its adoption. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Savoy and a second by Mr. Alexander. Do we have any <clears throat> discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 2.02 .02 passes unanimously. Do we have anyone here from Ms. Dell's family? Thank you. We will send the resolution to her family. She told me it would come, but not here Thank you, Sonny. Appreciate it. Item 2.03, resolution in memory of Mr. Stanley Berard. And I would ask Mr. Art Oakland if he would please read this resolution for us. I'd be honored, Madam President. Resolution in memory of Mr. Stanley Berard. Whereas Mr. Stanley Berard served a total of 38 years with the St. Charles Parish Public School System. And whereas Mr. Stanley Berard served as an industrial arts teacher, a counselor, a supervisor, assistant superintendent, and superintendent of the St. Charles Parish Public School System. And be it resolved that the St. Charles Parish School Board herein expresses to the family of the late Mr. Stanley Burrard its sincere sympathy in this time of their sorrow. And be it further resolved that a page in the March 24, 2021 minute book be set aside for the sole purpose of inscribing thereon this resolution and that a copy of this resolution be presented to Mr. Burrard's family. Second. And I move adoption. I have a motion by Mr. Oakland, a second by Mr. Robichaud. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 2.03 passes unanimously. Item 2.04, the 2021 School Library Month Proclamation. I would ask Mr. John Smith if he would please read that proclamation for us. Thank you, Madam President. 2021 School Library Month Proclamation. Whereas April 2021 has been designated the 36th Annual National School Library Month, and whereas school libraries provide materials for teachers and students that will encourage growth and knowledge, 
and whereas school libraries provide materials that will develop literary, cultural, aesthetic appreciation, and ethical standards, and whereas school libraries provide materials which reflect the ideas and beliefs of religion, social, political, historical, and ethnic groups, and their contributions to the American and world heritage and culture, and whereas school libraries provide books to encourage children to read for pleasure, and whereas school libraries provide materials to meet individual needs, varied interests, abilities, socioeconomic backgrounds, and maturity levels of the students served, and whereas school libraries are a fun place for students to go, and all students deserve a well-managed library to provide for free expression and access to ideas. Now therefore be it resolved that we the members of the St. Charles Parish School Board hereby proclaim the month of April as School Library Month and call upon school administrators, teachers, students, and community members of St. Charles Parish to recognize and support the contributions of school libraries. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Mr. John Smith and a second by Mr. Al Suffern. Do we have any discussion? Uh, Madam President, uh, I'd like uh, to ask Mr. Matt Spitz, Supervisor Kirkland Instruction, to say a few words before the board votes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Superintendent Ordling and school board members for proclaiming April School Library Month. In 1985, the American Association of School Librarians first proclaimed April as School Librarian Month. The theme for that first celebration was where learning never ends. Many aspects of education have changed in the past 36 years, but the school library is still the place where learning never ends. Chromebooks and smartphones have replaced volumes of hardback reference books. Digital magazines have replaced magazine racks. Students can now check out eBooks without ever even entering the library. All of these resources are available because our school library staff build and maintain collections that meet current education needs while also appealing to students of all ages and races. Thank you for recognizing the importance of our school libraries and the role our librarians and library technical assistants play, to in, play in ensuring that student never ends, that learning never ends for our students in our school libraries. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 3.04 passes, 2.04 passes unanimously. Come on now. Item 2.04 passes unanimously. We uh, have noticed that some of Ms. Fricky's family has joined us, so if you give us a moment, we'd like to present them with the resolution. Thank you.
<clears throat> All right, moving on to our recognitions. We have so many wonderful people to recognize this evening. Uh, at this time, the superintendent and I will come to the um, area where we have our little picture taking background and um, I believe Miss Regina is going to be the one who will call your names up for your recognition. Students, Destrehan High School student placed first at the 2021 Louisiana Region 10 Virtual Science and Engineering Fair, Kaylee Carrigy. School system students placed first at the 2021 Louisiana Virtual Regional Social Studies Fair. From Harry Hurst Middle School, Melody Benedict. And from St. Rose Elementary School, Meredith Bordelon. J.B. Martin Middle School students placed at the 2021 American All-Star Louisiana State Dance and Drill Team Championship. Placing third was the duet of Sophie Bourgeois and Lauren Perkins. and placing second for her solo was Carson Ford. <laughs> Employees, Hornville High School employee received a rain barrel project grant for $6,600, Melissa Hurst. Central Office employee received grants totaling $40,000 from John Deere to implement the Project Lead the Way Computer Science Essentials course at Destrehan and Hornville High Schools. Ronnie Seal. And at this time, I would also like to invite Mr. Bill Ridgeway of John Deere to please come forward for the presentation.
teams. Hornville High School cheerleaders placed third in traditional routine and first in game day routine at the 2020 Universal Cheerleaders Association Louisiana Virtual Regional Competition. Sponsors Jennifer Matthews and Robbie Kelly, and I believe we also have one of our cheer officers in attendance as well. Destrahan High School cheerleaders placed first and was selected as the best building and most creative team at the Worldwide Spirit Association's VIP Louisiana State Championship and won first place in the state at the Southwestern Cheerleaders Association's Battle at the Capitol. Sponsor Marcy Scott and officers. And as you notice as they're taking the picture, because of COVID capacity restrictions, we couldn't invite the entire teams to be with us tonight, but we are showcasing all of our teams this evening on the screen with the picture, and you'll see that at home as well. School system dance teams placed at the 2021 American All-Star Louisiana State Dance and Drill Team Championship and the Universal Dance Association Louisiana Dance Championship. The Hornville High School High Steppers placed third in Division Open and first in Division Kick at American All-Star. Sponsors Jennifer Matthews and Maggie Carzo and their officers. The J.B. Martin Middle School Cougarettes placed first place in Division Palm, Division Jazz, and Overall Jazz, received Technique and Choreography Awards for Jazz, and received the Division Sweepstakes Award at American All-Star. Sponsor Elizabeth Brogel and Officers, and I believe we have a couple of individual um, award recipients as well, and you can come forward with the officers as well. The Harry Hurst Middle School Runnerettes placed second in Jazz, Game Day, and Palm at UDA, and placed second in Division Palm, Overall Palm, and Overall Jazz, placed first in Division Jazz, Division Game Day, Overall Game Day, and Overall Officers, received Choreography Awards for Jazz and Game Day, and received the Division Sweepstakes Award at American All-Star. Sponsors Lauren Wagesback, and Missy Rome and their officers.
The Destrahan High School Dusty Darlings placed third in hip hop and second in jazz and game day at UDA and placed third in overall jazz, second in division jazz, first in division hip hop, overall hip hop, division game day, and overall game day, received technique and choreography awards for hip hop and game day, and received the division sweepstakes award at American All Star. Sponsors McKay Voges and Desiree Acosta and their officers. Well, it's quite a night for all the recognitions we got to enjoy this evening. And on behalf of the school board, I congratulate all of our outstanding academic scholars, our fantastic educators who earned important grants to support our students, and our fabulous cheerleaders and dance teams on both sides of the river in middle and high schools who brought home multiple wins highlighting the talents of our teams. We thank you all, we congratulate you, and hope you enjoy the rest of the evening while we take a little break so you can leave at this time, unless you'd like to remain for the rest of our meeting. <laughs> All right, moving on to the business items of our meeting this evening. Item 4.01, minutes of the February 22nd, 2021 committee meetings, February 24th, 2021 regular board meeting, and March 5th, 2021 board retreat. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Robichaud and a second by Mr. Savoy. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.01, passes unanimously. Item 4.02, renewal of property insurance. In accordance with the decision by the school board on December 14, 2020, Director of Risk Management, John Kane, has worked with the team from BRK Insurance Group, Riverlands Insurance Incorporated, on the district property insurance renewal. The Director of Risk Management reviewed the submission from the brokers BRK Insurance Group, Riverlands Insurance Incorporated, through AMWINS with the Risk Management and Insurance Committee on March 10, 2021. With the recommended insurance plan, the district will continue with favorable coverage at a competitive rate. The district will experience a rate increase of 6.7%, which is an increase of $137,686. This item was reviewed at the Risk Management and Insurance Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22nd, 2021, and is aligned with Goal C of the board's strategic action plan. Move approval of the renewal of our property insurance at a cost of $2,195,973. Second. second. I have a motion by Mr. Robichaud and a second by Mr. Suffern. Any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.02 passes unanimously. Item 4.03, fiscal year 2022 Head Start budget. The board approved supplemental allocations of funds to support the Head Start program. 
the Head Start budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022 is proposed. This agenda item was reviewed by the Curriculum, Instruction and Assessment Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22nd, 2021 and is aligned with goal A of the board's strategic plan. Madam President, I move that we accept the proposed fiscal year 22 Head Start budget. I have a motion by Mr. Savoy and a second by Mr. Oquam. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. <clears throat> Item 4.03 passes unanimously. Item 4.04, .04, Proposal Acceptance Assessment and Data Management System. St. Charles Parish Public Schools sought proposals for an assessment and data management system that will guide instruction by allowing instructional staff members to create, administer, and score curriculum assessments and store, manage, and disaggregate local and state assessment data. Eight proposals were received and reviewed by a committee. After evaluating and scoring the proposals, Power School is recommended. This item was reviewed at the Curriculum, Instruction and Assessment Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021, and is aligned with goal A of the board's strategic action plan. Madam President, I move that we accept the proposal from Power School for the assessment and data management system at a cost, first year cost of $88,620, a second year cost of $63,000, $750 and a third year cost of $63,750. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Savoy and a second by Mr. Oakland. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.04 .04 passes unanimously. Item 4.05, <clears throat> renewal of lease by the St. Charles Council on Aging. The St. Charles Council on Aging is seeking to renew the lease of portions of the Hornville Learning Center. The areas that have been leased are not needed at the present time for school board use. This agenda item was reviewed at the Capital Improvements Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021 and is aligned with goal D of the board's strategic action plan. Madam President, I move approval of the renewal of the lease of portions of Hornville Learning Center by the St. Charles Council on Aging at no cost to the district. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Alexander and a second by Mr. Suffren. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.05 passes unanimously. Item 4.06, renewal of lease by the St. Charles Parish Council. The St. Charles Parish Council is seeking to renew the lease of Building C at Yule J. Landry Alternative Center site. The areas that have been leased are not needed at the present time for the school board use. This item was reviewed at the Capital Improvements Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021 and is aligned with goal D of the board's strategic action plan. Madam President, I move to approve the renewal of the lease of Building C at Ewell J. Landry Alternative Center at no cost to the district. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Alexander and a second by Mr. Suffren. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.06 passes unanimously. Item 4.07, renewal of lease of the Ark of St. Charles. The Ark of St. Charles is seeking to renew the lease of Wing 1, Wing 2, and Wing 3 of the Booty <coughs> Adult Learning Center. Wing 1, Wing 2, and Wing 3 are not needed at the present time for school board use. 
This agenda item was reviewed at the Capital Improvements Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021, and is aligned with goal D of the board's strategic action plan. Madam President, I move approval of the renewal of the lease of wings, wings one, two, and three of the Booty Adult Learning Center at no cost to the district. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Alexander and a second by Mr. Suffren. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.07 passes unanimously. Item 4.08. St. Charles Community <coughs> Care Center Foundation Incorporated Cooperative Endeavor, Endeavor Agreement Renewal. The St. Charles Community Care Center Foundation Incorporated is seeking to renew the Cooperative Ende Endeavor Agreement to use Building B at the E.J. Landry Alternative Center. The areas outlined in the agreement are not needed at the present time for school board use. The Care Center Foundation supports the school system's goal of coordinated services to reduce the barriers to student success. This item was reviewed at the Capital Improvements Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021, and is aligned with goal D of the board's strategic action plan. Madam President, I move to approve the renewal of the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement by the St. Charles Community Care Center Foundation, Inc. at no cost to the district. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Alexander and a second by Mr. Suffren. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.08 passes unanimously. Item 4.09, <coughs> Summer Food Service Program. The Summer Food Service Program is a child nutrition program funded by the United States Department of Agriculture. Its primary purpose is to provide nutritious meals to needy children 18 years of age and younger during the months when schools are not in session. School communities qualify if 50% or more of the students are approved for free or reduced meals. Once the required percentage of eligible children is documented, any child may eat at no charge, regardless of economic status. The sponsoring agency assumes financial and administrative responsibility and is also responsible for operating the program within federal and state guidelines. The St. Charles Parish Council, through its Department of Community Services, has accepted the responsibility in St. Charles Parish. Plans are being made to use the kitchen facilities at Carver Early Learning Center and St. Rose Elementary School. The program will operate for the period of June 7, 2021 through July 15, 2021. This agenda item was reviewed at the Capital Improvements Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021, and is aligned with Goal D of the board's strategic action plan. Madam President, I move to approve the use of the two cafeteria facilities mentioned for the summer food service programs and the, all costs are covered through the St. Charles Parish Council Summer Food Service Program. Thank you. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Alexander and a second by Mr. Suffren. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.09 passes unanimously. Item 4.10, policy 1.04 non-resident students, second reading and adoption. In order to approve the granting of non-resident resident certificated employees the privilege of enrolling their child or children in St. Charles Parish Public Schools, revisions to policy 1.04 non-resident students is required. This agenda item was reviewed at the board meeting on Wednesday, February 24, 2021, and is aligned with goal B of the board's strategic plan. Madam President, I move that we accept the revisions to board policy 1.04, non-resident students for a second reading and adoption. I have a motion by Mr. Savoy. 
Second. A second by Mr. Smith. Is there any discussion? Madam President, uh, I'd like uh, Ms. Teresa Weber to come up to the microphone, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and Student Services, to say a few things relative to this um, change in policy. Good evening, Superintendent Ortling and members of the board. In the face of a critical teacher shortage, the board has expressed concerns relative to the school system's ability to retain the best and the brightest teachers while maintaining a highly effective teacher workforce. Since the Louisiana State Department has developed practices to equalize salaries across the state, teacher salaries are less competitive. While St. Charles Parish ranks in the top five for teacher salaries, the board and administration recognizes that we must continue to develop initiatives to provide competitive benefit plans to recruit and retain our teacher workforce. In response to the board's concerns and under the direction of the board, the administration has revised policy 1.04, non-resident students. This policy and the subsequent policy, 1.03 school admissions, were revised in an effort to recruit and retain teachers by allowing non-resident certificated employees the opportunity to register their children in St. Charles Parish Public Schools. Tonight, the board is voting on this policy for a second reading and adoption. I appreciate the board allowing me the opportunity to inform the public of the rationale for revising this policy. Like most districts across the state and country, the school system is feeling the effects of the growing national teacher shortage and the consequent challenge to hire cert certified teachers. The biggest impacts of this shortage are, are being felt at the middle and high schools and in special education. As we know through our partnerships with universities, the pool of students entering the teaching profession continues to decline, leaving school districts across the state and country with a decreasing pool of potential candidates. Additionally, a stable teacher workforce means success for our students, which is our top priority. As a proactive measure, measure to prevent future shortages and maintain a strong teacher workforce, the school system explored multiple ways to attract teachers to St. Charles Parish and retain, retain current ones. This opportunity was previously in place prior to 1996 and is common, a common courtesy offered by most school systems in Louisiana. In the spring of 2020, the school board requested a study to determine potential human capital, facility, and general budgetary impacts if non-resident certificated staff were given the opportunity to enroll their children in the school system. The Human Resources Department conducted the impact study to gather data and seek interest from those non-resident certificated employees. From the study, it was determined allowing this practice was not cost prohibitive and would provide a competitive edge in recruitment and retention efforts for St. Charles Parish Public Schools. It is beneficial to those employees as well as all students and all families as it enhances and maintains our ability to hire and keep the best and the brightest educators to teach our students and prepare them for their future. We are fortunate to be in the position where attending our school system is an attractive offer to potential and current educators. A few items of note, if this policy is approved for the second reading, this would be offered to St. Charles Parish Public Schools certificated employees who, as defined by the Louisiana Department of Education, hold a teaching and school leadership certificate. Any non-resident student would have to follow and abide by LHSAA guidelines if choosing to play sports. Based on the initial impact study survey, results from those eligible employees who responded, there could potentially be approximately 75 non-resident students attending our schools across grades K through 12 for the 2021-2022 school year. The school system receives funding from a number of different sources. These sources include the federal government, state government, local sales and property tax, and grants. 
as a way to defer potential additional costs and share in the investment as our residents do, each employee will be required to pay $1,000 per child. As a point of reference, the current mean property tax a resident pays is approximately $800, of which 54% is appropriated for St. Charles Parish Public Schools, or approximately $430. Again, I appreciate the board's response to the critical shortage we are facing. Your decision to adopt the revisions to board policy 1.04 will offer additional opportunities to attract teachers to our school system and ultimately maintain a highly effective and stable teacher workforce so that our students receive the education that will set them up for their future success. One of our core belief statements is, excellence is worth the cost. Thank you for aligning your actions to this belief. Thank you so much, Ms. Weber. I really appreciate you reading a statement that helps everyone to understand clearly. We're trying our best to put our students first. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.10 passes unanimously. Item 4.11, policy 1.03, school admissions, second reading and adoption. In order to approve the granting of non-resident certificated employees the privilege of enrolling their child or children in St. Charles Parish Public Schools, revisions to policy 1.03, school admissions is required this agenda item was reviewed at the board meeting on Wednesday, February 24th, 2021, and is aligned with goal B of the board's strategic action plan. Madam President, I move that we accept the revisions to board policy 1.03, school admissions for second reading and adoption. And there's no cost to the district. I have a motion by Mr. Savoy. I'll second. A second by Mr. Oquam. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.11 passes unanimously. Item 4.12, personnel items. Staffing management is necessary to maintain effective functioning of the St. Charles Parish Public Schools. The Human Resources Department provides a staffing update monthly to the board. This agenda item was reviewed at the Personnel and Policy Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021, and is aligned with goal B of the board's strategic plan. Move approval. I'll second. Have a motion by Mr. Robichaud and a second by Mr. Oquan. Do we have any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.12 passes unanimously. Item 4.13, Chief Financial Officer Salary Range Adjustment. In order to remain competitive with other school systems, as recommended by the board during the March 5, 2021 board retreat, and per St. Charles Public School Board Procedure 2.40R, an adjustment of salary range commensurate of experience is recommended for the Chief Financial Officer position. This agenda item was reviewed at the Policy, Personnel and Policy Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021 and is aligned with goal B of the board's strategic action plan. Madam President, I move that we approve the salary range adjustment of the chief financial officer position commensurate of experience with a range of 98,493 to 119,313. And this was actually reviewed at the uh, Finance and Audit Committee meeting on Monday. Thank second. you. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Suffern and a second by Mr. Robichaud. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.13 passes unanimously. Item 4.14, declaration of surplus buses. Due to age, mileage, and condition, two buses have been identified to be considered a surplus by the board. The board should declare the buses as surplus to allow them to be destroyed to meet legal requirements and requirements for the Volkswagen Settlement Grant. This agenda item was reviewed at the Finance and Audit Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021, and is aligned with Goal C of the board's strategic action plan. I move that we approve the uh, to declare buses as surplus and authorize disposal to meet legal requirements and the requirements for the Volkswagen Settlement Grant. Second. Have a motion by Mr. Uh, Suffren and a second by Mr. Robichaud. Do we have any discussion? I'd just like to note uh, that we, by approaching it this way, we can get um, over $20,000 per bus. I think it's 22000 to be exact, which is far better than we can do if we just uh, sold the buses at auction. So this is the better um, route for us to go uh, when it comes to disposing of our, of our old buses. Thank you, Mr. Suffern. Any further discussion or comment? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.14 passes unanimously. Item 4.15, bid acceptance janitorial supplies. One of the functions of the distribution center is to provide quality products at the best price to schools not presently on custodial contracts. In keeping with this practice, each year the school board seeks bids for janitorial supplies. This year bids were solicited from 10 vendors with eight responding. This agenda item was reviewed at the Finance and Audit Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021, and is aligned with Goal C of the board's strategic action plan. I move that we accept the bids for janitorial supplies as recommended at an estimated cost of $576,000. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Uh, Suffren and a second by Mr. Robichaud. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.15 passes unanimously. Item 4.16, resolution for the bond purchase agreement of taxable general obligation school refunding bonds. A resolution is required to provide for the issuance and sale of taxable general obligation school refunding bonds not to exceed $19 million. This agenda item was reviewed at the Finance and Audit Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22, 2021 and is aligned with Goal C of the Board's Strategic Action Plan. I move that we adopt the resolution for the bond purchase agreement of taxable general obligation school refunding bonds. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Suffern and a second by Mr. Robichaud. Any discussion? Madam President, members of the Board, I would just like to uh, recognize Mr. Uh, Toby Cortez, our bond underwriter with Stiefel, who helped uh, guide us through this process, and uh, we appreciate your your good work on this along with our bond counsel, Mr. Jason Akers. Thank you, Toby. Thank you very much. Right, Thank you so much. Any further comment or discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.16 passes unanimously. Item 4.17, accounts payable for the month of February 2021. Invoices and other financial obligations of the school district are customarily paid weekly. <coughs> Request for approval of these transactions is normally made to the board monthly. The board must approve expenditures of public funds under its jurisdiction. 
This agenda item was reviewed at the Finance and Audit Committee meeting of the board on Monday, March 22nd, 2021, and is aligned with goal C of the board's strategic action plan. Madam President, I'll move that we approve the accounts payable for the month of February 2021 in the total amount of $9,727,895. Most of that was uh, debt service fund uh, cost. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Suffern and a second by Mr. Robichaud. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Item 4.17 passes unanimously. Moving on to our closing items. Item 5.01, standing committee reports. The chair will now hear from any chairpersons that would like to share their meeting minutes. Madam President and members of the board, Capital Improvement Committee met on Monday. There were eight items on the agenda. Three were for committee meeting only, and those were one, a presentation by a GHC architect firm. Number two, safe schools update presentation by Mr. Kate Rogers and Mr. John Rome. And the third item was the long range major ma maintenance capital improvements, the principal's capital improvement, improvements, and the safe schools capital improvements. The other five items that were brought to the table tonight. They were one, the renewal of the Council on Aging lease, two, renewal of the Parish Council lease, three, the renewal of the ARC lease, four, the St. Charles Community Care Foundation Cooperative Endeavor Agreement renewal, and five, the Summer Food Service Program. And all of those items were uh, approved tonight, those five. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Uh, Madam President, the Finance and Audit Committee met on Monday, March uh, 22nd, and uh, the committee is comprised of, besides myself, Mr. Robuchot and Mr. Alexander. During Monday's meeting, the committee covered five items. All five of those items came to the full board this evening and were approved. Those five items were item 4.13, Chief Financial Officer Salary Range Adjustment, Item 4.14, Declaration of Surplus Buses. Item 4.15, Bid Acceptance for Janitorial Supplies. Item 4.16, Resolution for the Bond Purchase Agreement of Taxable General Obligation School Refunding Bonds. And Item 4.17, Accounts Payable for the Month of February 2021. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Suffren. Madam President, the Insurance Committee met Monday also. Uh, we first went into executive session to be updated on any legal issues. And then we also discussed our property insurance renewal that was approved tonight. Thank you, Mr. Rebuchow. Madam President, uh, the Career Fund Instruction Assessment Committee met on Monday night. We discussed the fiscal year 22 Head Start budget, also a proposal to, uh, to accept a uh, assessment and data management system which was brought to the board table tonight and was approved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oakley. I appreciate that. Okay, that concludes our committee reports. Do you have something you'd like to share, Mr. Smith? No. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 5.02, the superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Good evening. Standards describe what students should learn in each grade level. Each spring, the Louisiana Department of Education administers tests known as LEAP 2025 in grades three through eight to measure how well students have learned these standards. Students in grades three and four will take paper-based assessments for all four of their LEAP 2025 assessments. These include English language arts, math, social studies, and science, and will be administered April 28th through May 5th, 2021. Students in grades five through eight will take computer-based LEAP 2025 assessments in English language arts, math, science, and social studies. The assessment window for computer-based testing in grades five through eight will last from April 27, 2021 through May 12, 2021. 
Each school will provide specific dates for these assessments. Please join us in promoting the importance of doing their best on these tests as the results are used in planning instruction and in the school and district performance scores. High school students will also begin taking LEAP 2025 assessments during the week of May 3rd through May 6th, 2021. These high school assessments measure student learning in six high school courses, English 1, English 2, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, U.S. History, and Biology. The results of high school LEAP 2025 assessments are counted as 20% of the student's course grade and used in computing school and district performance scores. Students who pass their courses and do not score approaching basic or above on the LEAP 2025 test will have an opportunity to attend remediation and retest in the summer. Only students participating in LEAP 2025 assessments and pre-identified special populations should report to school on May 3rd through the 6th, 2021. Students will be dismissed at 12.55 p.m. each day during the testing window and students not participating in LEAP 2025 assessments will remain at home and engage in remote learning through various methods and platforms. I'm asking that all students arrive at school on time with a fully charged Chromebook as they will not be allowed to enter the classroom after testing has begun. Please maintain your regular morning routines and be sure that your child has adequate rest, adequate rest and a good breakfast prior to testing. With the combined high school positivity rate, school system positivity rate and community rate at very low levels and as advised by the Louisiana Department of Health officials, we will transition to a phased in on campus return of all high school students beginning March 29th and 30th. On these two days, all high school students will be required to attend school on campus <clears throat> and on March 31st and April 1st, we'll return to hybrid days. School administration and staff are excited, and so am I, uh, and all of our board members, for our students to return and will disseminate specific schedules to students this week. Continue disinfecting, cleaning, maximizing of distance between students and requirement of safety mask will be adhered to. While we have been able to successfully mitigate the spread of COVID-19 within our school buildings due to the safety measures in place, the community spread would negatively impact our system. We all must continue playing our part in preventing the spread of COVID-19 inside and outside of our schools by wearing face coverings, practicing social distancing, washing hands frequently, and staying home when sick. Thank you again for your continued patience, support, and understanding. We appreciate your assistance as we continue to serve our students, families, and employees during these unprecedented times. Madam President, that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Ortland. Motion to adjourn. Have a motion to adjourn second. by Mr. Brobeshow, second by Mr. O'Quinn. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Did, was that Mr. Smith? Uh, the, you second? That yeah. was me. I'm sorry. I was looking right at our. It's okay. I apologize. I have a motion by Mr. Robichaud and a second by Mr. Smith. Do, all in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. We are adjourned. <laughs>